Good afternoon, everybody. Also, my thanks to all the organizations behind this uh, great initiative. Uh, in fact, our purpose with this conference is to bring about a community of experts, civil society stakeholders, and policymakers to make uh, this purpose a fair, modern, and effective taxation a key issue for our common action. The purpose of the conference, I think it, it was achieved because we could identify many new ideas we'll now bring to the pipelines of policy making. Uh, I can tell you because we are starting uh, with Pultang among uh, many others in key positions of this pipeline of decision uh, making. This is ex exactly our purpose. Look, I think the conference was very rich First of all, when we uh, ask why is this issue so relevant? Well, this is so relevant because we need to have means to invest in our common future. And we are lacking these means. When we uh, commit ourselves to move to sustainable development goals, to invest in low carbon transition, uh, to make the best of digital revolution, these makes in, 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 in the demands a lot of investment and we don't have the necessary scale of this investment. Then there is a second reason which is the basic argument of social fairness. When we make this effort of investing in the future, we need to have a fair distribution of this effort to finance the investment. And there is also, I would like to refer to a third reason, is right now we are discussing about the future of the European Union. And this will be translated in the upcoming um, budget on the long term, the so-called multi-annual financial framework. And again, we don't have the means uh, to comply with all our objectives for this common European budget. So there are very strong reasons why this discussion is so relevant. But then together, all over the conference, we could also uh, make a clearer identification about what are the issues to be tackled. And of course, we started with the concern on um, tax avoidance. Uh, there is a long history about these starting with identification of tax havens, but now we know that the problem is much deeper and much more, let's say, sophisticated because we are dealing with tax evasion and the kind of industry to organize tax evasion based on very sophisticated services to advise on how to evade taxation. And this means that if we really want to tackle the problem, we need to bring about solutions not only for tax evasion, but for tax avoidance. This is more complex. And then we know uh, that we have a third issue, which is about unfair tax competition. This takes place all over the world, but even when we speak about the European Union as a common entity, or the single market, we come to the conclusion that we don't have a level playing field in the single market. We have tax competition. So the problem is a very worrying one, even inside the European Union. So when we come to this point of the diagnosis of the situation, we need to be ambitious on the solutions to be provided. And uh, Paul Tang is right. Uh, the problem we have is that all the framework which was built is outdated. And particularly when we identify the implications of the current digital revolution. Because all of a sudden we come to the conclusion there are new sources to produce added value. And these new sources are just not covered by taxation. Of course, we know, and uh, some of you have told, that this is more than just about tax policy. This is about how to regulate a new 
um, transformation which is taking place everywhere in our economies. But so this means that we need to undertake a serious effort of updating our way to ensure effective and fair and modern taxation. Let me just identify, because of course the conclusions will come later, provided by our, our team, that it is clear that some uh, in, important changes can be introduced at national level. I would refer to ensure an effective tax collection administration or discussing a fair progressive system for taxation. These are issues which can be decided and tackled at national level, but we see more and more issues which uh, require international level of action. Well, some of you have called for a coalition of the willing, that's for sure. I think in pragmatic terms we need to start with this coalition of the willing. But let me also underline, and I'm concluding, that the European Union as, as, as such is also a very relevant entity. And we have um, the responsibility to provide a leading example all over the world on how to uh, provide this effect effective and fair taxation. So that's why now the current discussion on how can we provide country by country report, how can we make sure that taxes are paid where profits are made, these issues are now being discussed with a top level priority in the European framework. And again, I agree that CCTB will provide a big opportunity. We need to use this opportunity, that's for sure. Let me underline also that if we see what is happening in the policy making discussion, we can have some triggers to come up with an agreement. The first one will be probably the discussion on the multi-annual financial framework. Because right now we don't have the necessary resources to finance a basic new budget of 1.3% of GDP to provide the common public goods we need to have in Europe. When it comes transition to sustainable development goals, when it comes regional cohesion, when it comes uh, Erasmus, we don't have the resources for this. So this might be a first trigger and this will come in the next few weeks and months. A second one I would say is the reform of economic and monetary union. Because if this is already very controversial that in the single market we don't have a level playing field when it comes to taxation, this is even more controversial, I believe, when we focus particularly on the Eurozone. The Eurozone is not sustainable if we cannot provide a level playing field when it comes to taxation. So this issue will come particularly if we start discussing on how to finance a fiscal capacity for the Eurozone. One thing will require some coordination for taxation. And there is a last argument, a last trick I believe will come, is that in the meantime, the European Union has committed to implement something called European Social Pillar. The European Social Pillar is supposed to provide equal opportunities for all children to be protected against poverty, for all young people to have a real access to uh, jobs or education or training, for all women and men to have access to good family care services, just as, uh, as examples. These are necessary updates uh, of the European welfare systems, promised by the European Social Pillar. But we still don't have the means for this. 
So I believe that um, in the progressive perspective, it's effective that we say in order to provide the means for the European social pillar, yes, we need to change our tax policy and to ensure a fair tax policy. The implication of these is that the best trigger I believe we can have to push forward a progressive tax policy will be public pressure. Public pressure based on uh, legitimate social expectations. So I believe that we should organize this bridge between social expectations, updating our welfare system, providing education for the future for all, and the need to um, redirect tax policy and to tackle the new sources of taxation. Like that, I think we have, thanks to this conference, and again, many thanks to the organizers, starting for the hosts, ETUI, FEPS, TASC, Friedrich Herbert Foundation, and SND Group. These are just some key actors of this coalition will bring about to ensure that we'll use this window of opportunity. Um, and again, uh, my special gratitude to all the speakers. This was a, really a high-level conference. Thank you very much.